Good everyone. Okay, so please, if you can hear me, kindly indicate with an emoji. Yes. Okay. All right. You're welcome to the GED uh, preparatory class for social studies. So, um, in order for us to maximize our time, we'll just um, be having a quick introduction um, to the GED social studies tests. Then um, we'll just explore a few of the, uh, few of the topics, and as we continue in the class in our classes, we'll be able to uh, take some GED um, really questions, and then um, see how far we can go with that. So um, for everyone who is. Um, Taking the GED um, classes um, for those in the United States and those um, outside the United States, the aim is to integrate you and to um, help you familiarize with, of course, the society. So the social studies um, is that bridge or is that um, is that subject that helps you to understand the society, um, the people, and of course, how to relate in the society. So there are concepts and there are things that you need to familiarize yourself with if um, you'll be a good student of social studies. So, um, it's important for us to understand that um, narrowing in on the test, you will need to understand um, main ideas and details. So why reading um, in the social studies text and some of the discussion we're going to be having around the, the topic, it's important you understand how to um how to pick out main ideas all right and details in all our reading and in all our conversation so um that's that's a skill that is very very important in social studies okay then another thing you must understand is while you go through your um, gd text you should be able to understand the language, how, how the writers, the authors use their language. So you'll be expected to read, um, read some text. So the use of language is really um, important when it comes to um, social studies, understanding social, social studies text, okay? Um, I want to believe you're taking notes um this is just like uh, an introduction to the test that the ged test so um i would just expect you to take note before we go into the topic for today then the next thing that i want you to really understand about the g the social studies test is the the ability to separate between facts and opinions so you should be able to while reading the social studies text you should be able to separate between between facts 
and opinion. You should know when a fact is being stated and when an opinion is being put out because it's, you need to understand um, when to put out facts and when to um, put out opinion. Yeah, so when, when, you are, when you are asked the question in your GED social studies test, uh, sometimes you might be asked to state, make statements or put out facts. So you need to know when you expected to put out facts and when you expected to put out opinions. All right. So these are very, very important um, clues and, and um, things you must know. And I would do well to always reiterate them in the, in the beginning of every class, probably for the first um, one or two weeks. So we we'll always have this reiteration to remind us and probably with example questions, okay, under each of these things. Okay, number five thing, number the fifth thing you need to also take note of when it comes to the GED preparatory class uh, or test is claims and evidence in social studies. Okay, so you must be able to separate between claims and evidence in social studies. All right, and sometimes some questions would um, would um, want you to determine whether um, certain claims are supported by evidence, right? Or for you to compare information, for you to compare information um, along the line. And in your, in your GED text, you'll be looking seriously at claims and then evidence, okay? All right, so that's that's number one skill. So all I've just mentioned now is under what I would call um, <clears throat> is under what I would call um, reading meaning in social studies. So you, you should know how to read meaning into in social studies. So while you are reading your text, the next thing is um, analyzing historical events and arguments. Okay, I'm just going to um, run through one or two things with you, and then I'll go to the topic of today. Like I said, I would like to always bring this, um, reiterate this, because they are very key skills you need when answering GED questions. Okay, now in analyzing historical events or argument in social studies, Number one is your ability to make inferences. Okay, um, when you talk about inferences, you're talking about um, um, how you draw your conclusions. Okay, um, how you draw your conclusions intelligently, you know, to presented facts. So in, in social studies, present fact to be presented. Um, um, you will be expected to analyze certain stories, certain um, historical events, and then um, ask to make inferences or draw out conclusions from um, the facts that is stated. Number two, you would need to make connections between different social studies um, um, concepts and elements. Okay, citizenship and government, people, places, and processes. So you'll be expected to make connections, right? Um, how does citizenship or, uh, or civic rights um, connect with government and government obligations? So you need to be able to make those connections. You need to look at, don't see, social studies is interconnected. All right, and um, fundamentally, there are connections. One node connects to each other. So it's important we have this mindset when, um, when discussing or when treating social studies. Okay, so the next thing I would like to point out is the fact that there, the effect of different social studies concepts on an argument or point of view um, this might be very um, 
complex, but it's important you understand that there are different approach or different constructs to events and situations, all right, that would shape the judgment of different authors. So as you read across um, certain GED materials in preparation for your exams, you you begin to see those different um, point of view or argument. Okay, so it is your it is required of you to be able to look at those concepts and understand um, where the point of differences. Okay, the point of differences from each of the authors or from each of the um, text you are going to be reading. So you need that skill so you don't get confused along the line. Maybe you come across two or three GED materials and all of a sudden you just get um, blown out of um, order. You, you, you can no longer order your thoughts uh, because of different points of view. So your ability to really look at the difference and see the point of differences is a skill you need in social studies. Now, these things I'm saying are quite important to help us navigate in the preparatory class, okay? So um, please indulge me. Then the next thing that, which way I will stop today, there are more, but I will stop here today in order for us to um, dive into today's topic, okay? Um, the next thing is to identify bias, okay? and propaganda in in your readings so you need to be able to look at bias that is why i stated earlier you must be able to point out facts and opinions so as you're going to be reading various texts for your study so um there will be a lot of historic events you need to analyze arguments and all of that um uh, text you need to read to quickly get you um, to understand what um, it is that you are supposed to know um, under this social studies um, subject. Okay, so having said all of that, please, if you are still with me, um, I want to see your emoji. Yeah, I really appreciate it just to be sure you're with me. Thank you, Kimberly. All right, so, so quickly, we, we want to start by exploring um, the theme, civic and government, civic and government. So um, I, I've gone through the the chat right now. I mean the the attendance right now. I found that um, I don't have an old student here, so I think I'll start here to give us a good start. Okay, so in our in in our GED. Um, class or the objective, one of the objective of studying social studies, um, yeah, of this subject is to, is for integration, is to equip um, the members of the society, the immediate society, of course, with the understanding of the society, the, yeah, to understand um, the various human interactions and relationships that exist uh, between the, in the social constructs, okay? So, and for us to really understand that, it's important we, uh, we look into a very fundamental aspect of the society that has to do, that immediately affects, you know, our lives. And one of those is government government okay so we want to look at um historical and modern government 
And first of all, the first question you need to probe here is, what is government? Yeah, what is government? Uh, when we say government, what do we mean? All right? Yeah, so, um, quickly, can I have anybody, maybe uh, at the chat box, just um, let me have your opinion of what government is. So I'm at the chat box now, but if you can't type and if you can speak, kindly unmute your mic. You have my permission to unmute your mic and um, let me hear your opinion of what government is. How the law of the country works. Yeah, thank you. How the law of the country country works yeah any other person thank you Berlin. yeah any other person okay government is like a group of people okay Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Yeah. Can I have one more person? Government. So, um, Dolene said government is like how the law works. And Christina said, government is like a group of people so you, you are both right um in a way but when we talk about government yes we're talking about um how the law works yes we're talking about a group of people because you can't talk about government without talking about um people yeah the people so let's look at a quick um, definition of government and we'll take it from there. So government is or are essentially institutions that create, interpret and enforce laws to maintain order and provide security in the society. So we need to really understand the definition of government like I said, social studies as a subject has to do with you reading, understanding what you're reading, and making and relating what you're reading. All right, understanding what you're reading and relating what you're reading. So when we speak government, we every country, every human society has one form of government or the other. So it is important to be able to really understand and make relation or um, relate what we are studying. Yeah. So when we say government, we're actually talking about a group of people. All right. Beyond the people are the institutions. Yeah. Because the people make up the institutions, but the institutions are established by law. Okay. Let me repeat that. The people make up the institutions. The institutions are established by law. That is why when um, Chrysanne said a group of people, she was right in a way. And um, when um, we got the answer on the law, how the law works, she was also right in a way. So, but we must understand how these two concepts work, all right? The law establishes the institution. The people are the ones who establish the law. And then um, in return, the, the institution, the people are also the one who runs the institution. So the people establish the law, they establish the institutions that where, where the people 
operate the institutions or work in those institutions. So that is why government is or are essentially institutions that create, that's number one, interpret, number two, and enforce law to maintain order and provide security in the society. So we can now see how um, um, man or people and law interact to make up government. Okay, so let's 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 move on. So when we talk about government um, in the various society, in the various social constructs we have, there exists um, different forms or types of government and we've had government throughout history and we've had government in contemporary times yeah so when we go back to the history of man or we'll go back memory lane and probably go to the history books or as far as our mind can travel we we understand that the, the society had existed in constructs. The society has existed within the bounds of customs, norms, rules, law, as we have it, and as well as what we now call government today. Okay, so, and if you should look at government, we have the historical and we have the modern government, the broad type, of course. Okay. So let's next question I would like to ask is um, across history, across history or, or before now, what are the various form of um, government that had existed or that you have come across or that is practiced in your country? Or oh, yeah, what are the what are the, what is the type? of government that you are um, exposed to? Anybody? What style of government? You can type on the chat box so that we can move to examples. democracy thank you democracy yes any other person and democracy can be considered a modern type of government so any other person who can give me um an historical example of a type of government i think one more person we do Okay, it's not incoming. All right, all right. So there, there are various forms of government. Okay, so broadly, government can be divided into two: modern and historical. And uh, when we say historical, we are talking about some forms of government that add um, that, that travel through the ages. Okay. Um, Number one, we have oligarchy. We have oligarchy. Number two, monarchy. Number three, dictatorship. Number four, democracy, um, which can be divided into two, the direct and indirect democracy. Okay? So, when we speak of oligarchy, we're talking about a government that involves a small group of people holding power, okay? That is just few group of people. Um, in, in some nations of the world, historically, we had the landowners, we had the landowners and we had what we call the peasants, okay, or the people who don't own land, okay? Now, this group of landowners um, determine what happens in the society. 
they are like the power brokers they are they are, they, they, they like uh, they like influence what happens in the immediate society so and we have nations that still uh, that practice oligarchy in time past all right and where power is shared among a group of people nobles landowners and um people from the royal royal bloodline and all of that okay so you have few persons that share power and they, they some of them belong to the royal bloodline some of them are landowners some of them are wealthy the wealthy few who determine how this an immediate society is wrong okay then the next type of government is the monarchy right monarchy okay we have two types of monarchy we have the um constitutional monarchy and we have the other form of monarchy which is the direct one uh, where a single person holds power a single person is the leader and most times power is handed down from generation to generation the power remains in one family or run through a family line okay so that's monarchy okay and which is absolute they with absolute power with absolute um, authority over the people the land and all that is in an immediate um society okay so the next thing we the next the, the other type of monarchy is the constitutional monarchy all right where um you have a king and you have a parliamentary system where um where the king do his his um is recognized in a ceremonial way um does not make direct decisions that influences the people all right and that immediately should begin to take your mind like i said social studies is relative so immediately i'm saying something begin to you know make the inference or make the connections all right the country a popular nation in the world today that practices um constitutional monarchy where the the king or the queen is there and yet we have another body um established body or institution that directly makes rules and laws that directly impact the society or the citizens okay so probably um as we proceed uh, in the next slide we're going to take a few questions and which few exercises which i want you to do all right so um stay tuned and follow the class okay so that's on monarchy okay we have examples so i will let your mind find go to the nations of the world and, and see if you can relate directly relate with this form of government the next one is dictatorship yeah dictatorship so the dictatorship involved um involves a single leader just like you have in monarchy right a single leader the power is absolute but there is an a caveat to the to dictatorship is the fact that the power is unchecked there is no check and balance when it is when it comes to dictatorship so um a dictator is is is, is mostly a style uh, of government uh, i i normally try to separate between a monarchy and dictatorship right so when a person rises as a dictator or in countries where the, go the 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 government let me not use the word an individual or someone who is in the m of affair became becomes dictatorial or becomes a dictator all right you you would now say that that country is under a dictatorship 
all right yeah a dictatorship it means that that person you know uses power in an unchecked manner okay often you know even if there are, there are elections elections are just ceremonial because um, at the end of the day the person hijacks power the person had monopolized the electoral system had monopolized the military had monopolized um, resources had monopolized uh, um, lands and all of that okay so the person more or less um, does as he or she pleases in a dictatorship okay so as um, as we have mentioned these three forms of government you need to begin to make inferences on how life would be for the citizens right how would a citizen what would what would be the rights privileges and um interactions of the citizen between the citizens and the government or between the governors and the governed so you need to look at the various also the various form of institutions and um systems or processes that will exist in these types of government being mentioned okay very very important your mind goes through that okay so just the study of social studies does not keep your mind um disconnected from what is being discussed okay it engages your mind it allows you to interact with your immediate environment or what you know about the world okay remember that though we are discussing social studies in the con in the context of the um american society however there are universal facts and truths there are things that are, are universal okay that you can relate with that you can interact with and then as we proceed in the class you can be able to narrow down and say oh okay so in that country in that nation this is what is practiced but in america here this is what is obtainable so it's important you you have that um overview and you are able to see the differences in the practice okay all right the next is democracy right um it's it's a system of government that empowers citizens all right either directly or through elected representatives all right through represent um elected representatives okay so modern democracies are typically representative while citizens elect officials to govern on their behalf okay so we said we often say that we have direct democracy and indirect democracy we have um, representative democracy which is another word for indirect democracy so when you when you hear me use the word direct democracy or indirect democracy you should be able to know the difference in all there are city democracy is all about citizen participation in government full participation of citizen in government and that is why government it, democracy in itself is defined as the government of the people by the people and for the people democracy is the government of the people for the people and by the people so each time um the concept of democracy is discussed the people the participators are very very key to the operation of the government right that is why it is the government for the people and by the by them means it's operated by the people is drawn by people right by the majority right so there's so much we need to unbox when we discuss democracy because that is the practice or the form of government that is adopted and practiced in the us okay so um the representative democracy let me just speak quickly on direct democracy you see before now the human society had 
that's more historical or old kind of democracy where um, the people decide. I think it's practiced in some places in the US today um, where there is this um, opinion booth where people make opinion and then majority um, takes um, the decisions. Okay? Yes. Yeah, so the die democracy is where the people themselves, you know, vote on matters, vote on issues directly. Okay? They don't need a senator, they don't need the congressperson, they don't need anyone to be um, an intermediary between them and the decisions that affect them. So they are involved directly. Okay, in, in, in your immediate family, in, in our immediate family, let me use the word, in our immediate families. So sometimes um, the father and the mother make the decision, okay, on behalf of the children, Okay, that sometimes the children themselves, okay, are asked, okay, they are to make inputs on the decision that is about to be made for them, okay. So in the case where the children are strongly involved on what what affects them, we call that direct democracy. In the situation where the parents you know, as representatives of the children, right, um, makes the decision for the children is what we call representative democracy. Even though this analogy does not truly represent um, the concept of democracy, it explains the difference between direct and indirect democracy. Okay, so. Okay, I think that's where I'm going to stop for us to take some exercise and then we move forward. All right, so if you can see my screen, I think this is the time. I'm going to give you a few minutes. Remember, it's a preparatory class, so we, we want to not just talk, but engage your mind so just to help you in in solving those questions i have one to four question the first slide and another one to four question in the second slide that's about eight questions altogether so um if you look at the far right of this slide you will see countries, their form of government, and their head of state or head of government. Okay. In Canada, you have a form of government, and the, that form of government is is a federation. Canada is a federation running a constitutional monarchy a constitutional monarchy. I think I, I explained that. So, and the chief of state is the British monarch. Okay, you know, hope you know, hope you know um, Canada is like a British colony, an old British colony. So, um, that, that historical um, reading, so that's not the focus for today, all right? So in Canada, you have what we call a constitutional monarchy, right? Yeah, there are constitutions, there are laws, there are um, a set of people who make decisions, who are represented, you know, um, who represents rather the citizens who make up the ruling class, okay? Very, very important to understand this. However, the head of the chief of state is the British monarch. Then the head of government is different. Remember when I was explaining um, monarch, the two types of monarch, um, gov monarchical government we have, I, I stated that we have the, the one person, the king or the queen, then we have another body or institution 
that deals directly with governance of the people, right? So the head of government in such arrangement is always different from the chief of the state, okay? So the chief of the state is always different from the head of government. So the head of government in Canada is the prime minister and the chief of state is the monarch, the British monarch. So today we have, um, of course, the king of England, but before now, it used to be the queen of England. Okay, you can feel in, you can feel in the, um, the thoughts. All right, in China, China is a communist state and you have the president and you have the premier um, Germany is a federal republic, right? Uh, we have the president and you have the chancellor, okay? You have the chancellor as the head of government and you have the president, okay? Then in Iran, you have theocratic republic or a form of a, a religious, um, a religious um, setting, a religious kind of arrangement. So you have the supreme leader, and you have the president. In, Mexi in Mexico, you have the Federal Republic, you have the president. The president is both the chief of state and the head of government. And in Netherlands, you have the what we call constitutional monarchy. So you have a monarch and you have also the prime minister, just like you have in England. Russia, you have the federa is a federation. And so you have the president and you have the premier. Okay, in Saudi Arabia, you have the monarch, is a monarchical kind of um, system. You have the king and prime minister, okay, who also doubles as the head of government. Okay, so it's your turn now to engage. I have four questions there. So kindly, um, kindly answer the questions one to four. Everybody is to participate in this now. Um, if you're driving or you if you're driving or you're not ex uh, exposed to um, handling this for now doing this for now kindly um, let me know in the chat box Okay, so the rest of us can, can just quickly do question one to four. Thank you. So I'm waiting for your answers now. Okay, so I'm going to take the first questions. First question, and then I would like um, any of us to answer. So which country has a form of government most similar to that of the United States? Canada, Germany, Mexico, and Russia. So what's your answer? Oh, okay. Please, can you hear me? If you can hear me, let me have an emoji, please. Hello? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, just try my, um, it might be minimized on my, on your phone, so you could just increase um zoom it in yeah i think i've tried doing that on my screen so confirm you can see it now 
Oh, okay. Very good. All right. So what's the question? What's the answer to number one? Then you can go off mute and answer. So you can go off mute and answer or you type on the chat box. Canada, okay. Somebody someone says Canada. Yes. I'm waiting for Darlene and Chrisania. You can come off mute if you can. If you can't, kindly type your answer on the chat box. Okay, the question is. But the question is, um, which of the states had a similar kind of government with the United States? From the from the example I just shared with you, from all I've just shared with you, which country has a form of government most similar to that of the United States? Um, I can barely see it. Hold on, maybe it's my camera. Like what? Canada? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so which country? We have options Canada, Germany, Mexico, and Russia. So which country? I'll go with Canada. Okay. All right. So, Chrisani goes with Canada. Darlene, are you there? Okay. All right. So, what's I'm your... there, but my phone is acting up. I'm in and out. I didn't hear the question. Okay. The question says from the list of countries in the option yeah mm -hmm. which country has the form of government most similar to that of the united states we have canada germany oh. mexico and russia oh canada okay canada you all just you all mentioned canada okay so the united states of america has thank you thank you Darlene. yeah so um, let me just quickly run through question number one again all right now if you look at the question the question says which country has a similar kind of government with the united states the united states does not run a a monarch kind of system so the head, the chief of state in the United States is the president. The head of government is also the president. So that means um, Canada is not the answer because Canada runs a, a constitutional monarchy. Yeah, a constitutional monarchy. And Germany. Hey, Canada is the answer? Yeah, Canada runs a constitutional monarchy. So Canada is oh, not the okay. answer, right. And okay. Germany is not also the answer because um Germany has a president and a chancellor, uh, who is called the Chancellor. So Mexico, Mexico is the answer. Mexico yeah, for what question? Yeah, for number one, question one, Mexico is the answer. All right, the U.S., the head of the government in U.S. is the president and the head or and the chief of state is also, is also the president. Hope you hope it's clear. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, Darlene, I'll just mute. I'll just mute so that. Okay, so. All right, so everybody, if, if this is clear, if question one is clear and you understand perfectly, just give me a thumbs up. Question, question one is C. Yes, question one is C, Mexico. Oh. Yeah, Mexico. Okay. Okay, very good. Very good. All right, so we go to question two. Question two now. Which country has the government in which one individual wields the most power? That is, in that government, only one person with the most power. In which type of government do we have such arrangements? Um, was it Netherlands? Netherlands. All right. Why did you choose the Netherlands? So check no. the chat on the right side. Check the chat on the right side and you understand. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. I see it. You say it now. Good. All right. So, yeah, you can type on the chat box the rest of you if you can't speak. All right. So, what's what's your answer now? Russia. Russia. You're close. You close, but I want you to pay attention to the um okay, someone said China. Okay, pay attention to the chat on the right, and I think you'll get it. One individual. So in what type of government does one individual has the whole power? Like everything comes from that one person decisions are made oh saudi arabia saudi arabia correct so that's the answer saudi arabia and if you look at the chat there you see that saudi arabia runs a monarchy and the king and prime ministers the king doubles as the as the both the king and the prime minister so the king doubles as the chief of state and the head of government and in the monarchy system one person these make decisions. So yes, give it up for uh, uh, for you. You've done well. So you have Saudi Arabia as a perfect example of such type of government. Question three now. Question three now. Which of which is the best explanation of what is meant by calling Iran? by calling iran a theocratic state which is the best explanation can you explain um why iran is called a theocratic state a a it is a dictatorship mm, you're close Let's read the options. Let's read the options and probably to make sense now. All right. Option A says it is a dictatorship. Um, option B say laws must conform to religious law. Option C say law must conform to constitutional theory. D says all officials must take on oath of office. So what's the answer? So here you are making D? difference. D, D, no. Not D. Yes, let me go to the chat and see your answer. <laughs> okay, the rest, I'm waiting for your answer. Darlene and Aizana, sorry if I don't pronounce it well. Okay, let me have your answer before we, Chrisania, get to try again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to put up the questions again. Yeah, so just zoom in and really think about your answer. 
really think about to answer, which is the best explanation of what is meant by calling Iran a theocratic state. You just said something. Is it C? C? No, it's not C. It's oh, not C. <laughs> it's not C. Okay, so let me just give you, let me just. Okay, can I zoom to the question? Sure, I can. Okay, see, ya. there you have it. No. Okay, there you have it. Okay, one more attempt, one more attempt, and I will just have to say the answer. Which is e? the best? Yes, correct. The answer is B. The answer is B. So Iran is called a theocratic state because every law conforms to religious law. Uh, yeah, so every law conforms to religious law. So it's more or less like a country governed by religious law. So if you're going to Iran, you must obey their religious law and you must find out what um, their religion respects and of course do well to respect um, their laws. Okay. Last question okay. for today. So I want you to go through it yourself and then give me your answer on the chat box. Hmm. You can screenshot this question um, in the next class. I'm going to start from here, and um, you are going to really have to answer more questions for me. So um, you have to just be ready. Okay. Question four. You have one more minute, and I will just read the questions, and then we'll see if we can answer them. Answer the answer the question. Okay, I go to the chat box now. Okay. Prisania said B. Darlene, I'm waiting for your answer. I mean, is he even there? <laughs> I didn't get that. Is she there? I don't know if she's here. Oh. Hello, Darlene, Darlene, if you can't um if you can't speak, if you can't type, you can speak. Okay. All right. All right. Now you all got it right. Wow. So I give it up for the both of you. Thank you. That was the correct answer. The correct answer is democracy. So in a democracy, you have free affiliation. In a monarchy, there is nothing like election except in a constitutional monarchy. You have a form of ele election that has to do with the prime minister. So in a monarchy, in the constitutional monarchy, there is election to elect the prime minister, but not an election that um, not from the people directly, but election in the parliament to appoint who becomes the prime minister. Um, in an oligarchy, there is nothing like election. Okay. In yeah, what's that? What's, yeah, what's that? Yeah. Can you repeat? What is the oligarchy? I can't say the word. <laughs> okay, oligarchy. Okay, in an oligarchy. Yes, that. Yeah, oligarchy involves a small group of people holding power. So, um, when you have the rich. And the mighty in the society and be deciding what happens in government what happens to the people and what happens in the society 
So in Anoliga key, you have few persons, say the say um, the landowners in, in old um, in the old um, in old um, um, constructs where you have um, the the nobles and the peasants, and so the nobles determine what happens to the rest of the people. So in such in such construct, you you call that oligarchy, where few powerful people rule the country. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So um, there is no election in such kind of setting. So the the few powerful people determine what happens. But in a democracy, the people elect their representatives. The people are the ones who um, hold power in a democracy. So that is why it is called the government of the people, by the people, and for the people. All right, people, this is where we we'll end for today. I will see you in the next class. I, I believe you've screenshotted. Um, the the question kindly go through it and i would be asking you more questions in the next class thank you very much and enjoy the when rest the next of class, your day. Wednesday? all right have a blessed day when the next class okay yes that it's on the timetable so shared oh, okay. on the group all right yeah okay bye everyone all right take care yeah